Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Along with my recently released new player guide, I wanted to update my three beginner decks video from almost a year ago now. The new player experience changed a couple months ago, and beginners have access to more cards and resources than ever before. If you're a new player trying to get into the game, then this video is for you. I made three budget, easy to play, and powerful decks that are intuitive for new players to hop on and get that early lead over your opponents. These decks can be crafted only using commons and rares. I wanted to avoid epics because it takes a while to get even three epic wild cards, but I will talk about some epic cards to slot in when you get the resources. I will also talk about champion replacements during each deck rundown, and each deck code will be in the description below along with the Mobilytics links. Before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I make deck profiles, beginner friendly videos, gameplay highlights, and other lore related stuff. I'm super close to 5k subs, which would be a huge milestone for me, so it'd be awesome if you joined. This is the only channel where you can get my specific style of content, so you won't regret subbing. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you want to see live gameplay of someone who's hit Master Tier every season since beta and peaked rank 1 in NA. With that, let's get into the deck rundowns. Also, quick disclaimer, you won't be able to build these decks as is day 1 or anything. These are simply decks to build early and work towards as a new player while learning the fundamentals of the game. Most likely, you will start with the default versions of these decks and then use the resources you get to refine them to the final versions that I have in this video. Without further ado, let's talk about the first one and my personal favorite one, no bias, Spiders. Spiders are a very, very aggressive deck, something that I use pretty much every season in order to climb. In fact, it's been performing pretty well for me in Platinum and even Diamond currently. So. It is a super aggressive early centric deck where we play all of our 1, 2s, and 3 drops and then our 5 cost is just direct damage to the face. The methodology behind this deck is your opponent has 20 HP, so let's bring 40 damage, right? This is super super aggressive burn strategy. Um, other card game players would recognize this as something similar to Face Hunter from Hearthstone or like red strategies from Magic the Gathering. So we're going to talk about each of the cards and their role in here. We're, we are running 12. Uh, whopping one drops. We have Legion Rearguard, who cannot block, but he is a premium statted card. He is a 3-2. He trades into literally everything on turn one, and if the opponent doesn't play on turn one, you can get in three cheesy damage. Very good. Legion Saboteur is trying to do the same thing. She wants to attack on turn one, also to get in three damage because of her effect. However, she has the upside of being able to block compared to Rearguard, but she has one HP. Uh, Precious Pet, he is also a really good turn one play. You want to play him when you don't see your other ones. He is fearsome, so enemies that have three or less, or no, two or less power cannot block him. They have to have three attack or higher, so he's really good into most turn one units. Next, we have Stygian Onlooker. He says one mana cost, but he's actually not a one cost. You use him as a combo piece in the mid game in conjunction with other units in order to push big damage with him because Nightfall means he has to be played after your first card of the round. So it is common to play Frenzied Skitter to lower your opponent's attacks across their board and that puts them below fearsome blocking range. And then you play Stygian after that in order to swing really big damage in the mid game. Arachnoid Horror is a spider, we'd like to see that. Didn't talk about that with Precious Pet, he's also a spider which has synergy with Elise. So Arachnoid Horror is a premium statted aggressive unit, 2 mana 3-2, very good and has fearsome so it's hard to block him. Uh, next we have Elise, champion. On attack she summons a spider which is good because on round start, if you have 3 other spiders she levels and becomes a very strong aggressive early tool to play around. All the challenges of fearsome and challenger, you can manipulate what you want to attack and how to push in your damage. Very good card, Elise is super awesome. And this deck is really good for beginners because she's the only champion that's actually in the deck and required to be in the deck. You can slot in um, other aggressive champions if you want. If you don't have the deck space, you can slot in Darius, Draven works, Callista works, even Katarina works. Honestly, you can play pretty much any aggressive champion uh, alongside Elise if you don't have enough resources to craft this deck as is, which should be uh, pretty easy to do after just a couple weeks of playing because these are all commons and rares. Next we have House Spider. It is a spider that summons another spider, so two bodies for the price of one. Also super good for Elise synergy. Uh, they're really good blockers and they're really good at putting on pressure. Imperial Demolitionist we run as a quick two of because she deals one to um, the end. No, she deals one to your ally and then two to the enemy nexus, so she gets in two free cheesy damage. It's pretty good for face. Um, it definitely adds up if you're hitting over the course of the game. This two damage goes a long way. 
Unspeakable Horror can drain one from anything. Drain means you also heal from it, so you deal one and heal one. Nightfall, if you play this um, not the first card of the turn, you also create a random Nightfall card in hand, which there's a slew of those. You're going to have to play it out and see all of the different uh, Nightfall cards you can get, one of which is Doom Beast, who's a very good card. If we generate him, uh, Nightfall, so if he's not played first in the round, drain two from the enemy Nexus, so deal two to the enemy and also heal you. Uh, too as well. So it's really good in burn mirrors if you're fighting other aggro decks, you are also healing. Super good card actually, really flexible. It's awesome to get multiple copies of him from Stalking Shadows as well, which we'll talk about very shortly. Frenzied Skitter, when I'm summoned, give other spider allies plus one, plus zero, and enemies minus one, minus zero. So this is good at uh, when you're spamming your spiders all over the board, you make them all a little bit stronger and you make all of your opponent's units a little bit weaker so that they can't block your fearsome units. Very, very good. Also in conjunction with multiple Stygians, this can get kind of out of control. One of my favorite turn 5 plays is, you know, play something, maybe for some mana, and then play Stygian Stygian, boom, Frenzied Skitter. Then your opponent is all super low, all your Stygians are hitting, super big damage. Noxion Fervor is a quick reactive removal spell. Deal 3 to an ally to deal 3 to anything. So you usually want to use this when your opponent tries to remove one of your units. For example, let's say you have your Doom Beast on the board. The opponent wants to Mystic Shot it, which is just deal 2. They want to kill your Doom Beast. Then you react with Noxion Fervor. Noxion Fervor will happen first because spells resolve backwards. It will deal 3 to your Doom Beast and then 3 to the enemy, whichever you choose. You can choose a unit or... Uh, most often the enemy face in order to kill them. Next, Triple Stalking Shadows. So this is our only innate draw in the deck. It's also our refuel card. We pick a follower from the top four cards in the deck, draw it, place the rest in the deck, whatever, and create an ephemeral copy. So this is basically you pick a card and you get two copies of it. One is normal, one is ephemeral, which means it dies at the end of the round or if it strikes. But it's really good for on play effects like Doom Beast because then you get to double up on the uh, play value if you can play both of them. And then to round it out, we have Triple Decimate, of course. Deal 4 to the enemy Nexus, very consistent ender. If you have multiple of these, it's 10 mana deal 8, which is a huge chunk. And that's pretty much how we're trying to kill the opponent. We literally bring damage, bring units, uh, refill the board with Stalking Shadows, play a bunch of things in conjunction with each other, big combo turns, and big damage turns are the way you're going to win with this game. Strike hard and strike fast, they say. And now here's a live commentary game uh, with the deck. I want to talk about why I'm playing each card and the game state and hopefully it gives you a good understanding and a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, getting right into it, it looks like we're fighting deep, but they're also teching in one or two Viego probably. So this is considered like a slow mid rangey it can be control sometimes depending on how it's teched, but I know it has a good amount of heals, so we are going to have to play through that. We have pretty heavy spider opener, we don't want Demolitionist because he's actually a combo piece that we want to use in the mid game as well, similar to Stygian, so we're going to pitch him because I don't have a current turn where I want to play him. Currently I want to play Precious Pet on defense 1 since the opponent has attack token and I want to play House Spider on attack 2. These are some flexible removal tools. And a draw card. Alright, we have a very interesting flexible hand. A lot of options. Hopefully we just keep drawing our aggressive units. That would be optimal. Elise on turn 2 is absolutely optimal. Uh, against Deep, there's not a lot of things that he can play on turn 2 to actually block her fearsome stat. So we're definitely going to play her and try to make the most of it. Elise is usually a top priority <clears throat> on attack 2. <clears throat> we'll double swing that. Bah, bah. And then we can actually force <clears throat> a, or threaten an Elise level with this House Spider because she'll see three other spiders on the board. Because House Spider's a two for one. Nice. As long as he doesn't have removal, he could have Jaw Hunters on attack three, or he could have Vile Feast, which is basically just a drain one as well, and kill my precious pet, depending on what he's running. If he just plays back and plays like another Thorny Toad and the Dreg Dredgers, then we'll be good. Or this thing, yeah. That also works. Now we are threatening Elise level. He shouldn't be able to do anything about Elise specifically. Nice, we actually got it off. My true beauty is beneath the skin. Very nice. Arachnoid Horror. So the question is, do we play? Or do we open attack, which is first action attack? I kind of want to play Arachnoid Horror. I don't really care what he plays on 4. 
The only thing would be a big 4-4 uh, C monster, which I can deal with, with Arachnoid plus Unspeakable, so we should be okay to play here. We also have 3 mana for the rest of the turn, which is exactly enough to play pretty much anything that I want. So, I think it's good to play here. There's his Jaw Hunters. That is fine. So what we're going to do is attack with 4-3. We definitely want the, that to go through. Uh, we can trade 1-1 uh, one, one into 4-1. Because this is a fearsome blocker anyway. So we might as well uh, manipulate the attack in our favor. With the challenger that Spider Elise is granting Spider Ling. Uh, we can do 2-2. Two, two to... We can do it to 1-2 if we want. Otherwise we're pushing damage. So 2-1, two, 3-2. Two. I guess it could just be like this. We ignore these because they're not fearsome blockers, so this pushes maximum damage for us. We literally have 3, 4, 5 direct damage in hand. So we should just try to whittle the opponent as fast as possible. We could actually float this as well and not really do anything else. We don't have to play the Unspeakable Horror. Nice, now we can do Stalking Doom Beast this turn. Or Noxion Forever Doom Beast, and that will threaten a lethal immediately on turn 5. I think that's a good play, especially if he plays below certain mana ranges. I don't want him to be able to use removal on my units, so I don't want to play until I grasp or something. I'll probably have to fervor my Elise or my 3-2. And then we have Doom Beast, and we have 2 more damage, so yeah. Depending on his, on his hand state, he's just very dead. As you can see, you are heavily rewarded for just playing units and swinging. Uh, and making sure you do as much damage as physically possible. He, he's dead like three different ways there, and it's only turn five. Pretty crazy when you get a good opener like that. The next deck that I want to talk about is another personal favorite of mine, and that is Scouts. I remember I actually hit Master Tier with Scouts the first uh, season that they came out. I also played it a little bit after that for like two or three more seasons, even through Grand Plaza meta. It was a lot of fun. So it's really cool to revisit this, um, because... It was added to the new player experience. For some reason, you are just given scouts now. I didn't realize that until I was playing on a new account so I could see what resources we have as new players. I'm like, wow, we just get scouts? That's really cool. Because scouts are really, really fun and intuitive and good at learning the game for sure because it abuses the multiple attack feature, which is uh, really, really strong in Legends of Runeterra. So we'll take a look at the curve. It's pretty early centric, similar to the last deck. I'd say it's a little bit more in the mid-range area where you want to win turns, like, you want to set up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then win turns 5 uh, through 7. So yeah, we got that going for us. I do have epics in this, but I'm going to take them out to showcase the code version, so we'll talk about everything uh, as we go through. So Fleet Feather Tracker, this is a really, really good turn 1 unit. It is a 2-1. If you summon another unit, it gets Challenger, so you can force kill whatever you want with it. So. Being able to manipulate that attack is very good, especially if you're playing Bright Steel Protector in conjunction. I'm pretty much going to skip the rest of this for now and come back to it because Bright Steel Protector needs to be talked about with Fleet Feather Tracker. It is currently, in my opinion, the best turn 1 into turn 2 play in the entire game in terms of board pressure, uh, especially if you are playing on attack evens. So you set up Fleet Feather Tracker on defense 1. You go into attack turn 2, play Bright Steel Protector on top of it, you have a 2-1 with Challenger Barrier and a 3-2. That is absolutely insane for board pressure and you beat over literally anything that the opponents could possibly do. Uh, even their own Bright Steel into, or Fleet Feather into Bright Steel combo because you can swipe your tracker into their Bright Steel. It beats itself even, as long as you're attacking on even, so if you're on attack turn 2. So really insane combo. It is a must run in most Demacia strategies and since we're running Demacia, it is in here. So next we have Jagged Butcher. He is a 2-2, which is basically a little Scythria. Let me bring her up. So it's usually between these two. It depends on if you're running a more heavy version of Bilgewater or not. If we're running Bilgewater, we might as well run him because he's the same thing as her, a vanilla 2-2, with the bonus effect that if you deal damage to the enemy Nexus before you play him, he becomes a 3-3. Very good. So sometimes he's just a 3-3. Next we run two Rangers Resolve. This is really good at protection. This deck should be renamed to uh, Protect MF. That is literally the only goal. Ranger's Resolve gives allies tough, which is really, really good in this meta because opponents have ways to deal uh, exact amount of damage. Like sometimes there's a bunch of one damage things that will snipe your tracker. We'll try to like finish off your MF and stuff. And Ranger's Resolve just help you give it tough. Tough means your units take one less damage. So really, really good at making the opponents uh, overreach and waste their removal spells on things that don't even finish you off. Very good. We only want to run it at two of though uh, in this refine list because it can be bricky at three 
So next we have Triple Blinding Assault. This is two mana, summon a scout. This has synergy with Misfortune. Also, it has Challenger, so it's very good with Misfortune passive, and it's also good at if you have Bright Steel Protector, you can throw the barrier on this and it will attack, and then you'll be able to attack again because that's how scouts work. So I'll quickly take a moment to talk about the scout keyword. It says the first time only scout units attack each round, ready your attack, which means you can attack again with everything. So you basically get two attacks as long as your first one is with scouts only. That's pretty much the, the summed up version. Next we talk about Bright Steel Protector, I did that. Um, other than the tracker combo, it's also good at protecting uh, important allies that you don't want to get killed by spells and stuff on certain turns and you can get multiple attacks off with. Super, super good. So we're going to talk about Lucian here. I chose the Lucian variation of scouts for beginners uh, over Quinn. So those are the two variations. It is either Quinn MF or Lucian MF. Quinn is really good, and I think she's probably the optimal version, however, you are not given any Quins as a new player, but you are given at least two Lucians, which is absolutely insane. So the new player deck will probably look like 2MF, 2 Lucian, by the way, because it's what you start with, however, of course, we want to build towards three of each for consistency. So, I mean, if you're able to just build a scout deck that has two of these, you're, you're, you're good to go as a new player. You can play scouts with 2MF, 2 Lucian, and work your way up to the third copies of each, prioritizing Misfortune, of course. And, I mean, you're just pretty happy with that. Champion power is absolutely insane. And what Lucian also allows us to do is run Senna with us. Senna, I guess I can skip and then come back to um, the other cards. Senna is a Lucian combo. So the first time an ally Lucian dies, grant me 1-1 and double attack so she strikes twice. Lucian also says, uh, this, f this first part, if four allies die, that doesn't usually happen in scouts. But an allied Senna dies, so that's this. So what you can do is put on a uh, crazy amount of pressure. Like, let's say you don't open Misfortune, then scouts are a little bit weak, right? If you're running Quinn. However, when we're running the Lucian version, we have a second win condition to play around. And that is uh, play a one drop, play Lucian, and then play Senna. If Lucian and Senna are both on the board at the same time, if your opponent tries to kill one, the other one will get bonus effects and stats. So it's really hard to deal with. It's actually crazy amount of board pressure and it's a good secondary win condition to play around and it's uh, really enjoyable too because you get some like really crazy combos off with Lucian and Senna so that's why I'm choosing to run them as a beginner friendly aspect over the Quinn. We got double make it rain. Make it rain is really good in this meta because opponents are playing a lot of things that have one HP. Um, it is a little bit of an RNG effect however for the most part it will give you good results so we want to run that at just a quick two of. We have multiple misfortunes for more copies of Make It Rain, so we don't need to run more than two, but we can depending on numbers and resources on the rest of the deck. Triple Sharp Sight. Sharp Sight is the best combat trick that we have access to. Give an ally 2-2, really good at protecting MF. Usually you don't really care about the uh, attack, you're actually just using this for the HP, because we want to protect MF and keep her alive so that she can get her level up off, which we'll talk about very shortly. And also the bonus effect of being able to block elusives is very good. So, Miss Fortune, very strong powerhouse. Her entire thing is when allies attack, you deal one to all battling enemies, so anything that's blocking, and also you get one cheap damage on the enemy nexus every single time. She does not have to attack for this effect to go off, she just has to see allies attack. Uh, she can attack too though, of course, for pressure. Level up, I've seen you attack four times. So this is where the synergy comes in. Remember how I said scouts get to attack multiple times a turn? Well, yeah, all of a sudden instead of attacking four times, you only need to have two attack turns and she will level, essentially, because of how scouts work. So that's where it comes in. She has a lot of insane power. Uh, she has Overwhelm when she's leveled up. When allies attack, deal th one three times. So she'll deal three to enemies, and then three to the enemy nexus, and becomes a really crazy uh, win condition. Especially when we have Rally. Rally also means attack. Just attack again. Let's go. So that's three mana attack. We don't want to run this at three of, because we have multiple copies of Lucian to give us multiple copies of Relentless Pursuit. So, yeah, it's the same methodology of Make It Rain. We can bump it to three based on numbers, though, of course. Triple Senna, I talked about, super good alongside Lucian. Grizzled Ranger is a scout that when he dies, you summon a bigger body. So he's, like, rewarded for attacking. That's the cool thing about this, is you can just play him, attack, not really care. You get the scout attack off, and then you get to attack again with a 3-4. Super good. Island Navigator is a scout. Also, when she summons, she summons a random one cost and also gives it scout, so super good synergy there. You can summon the one cost. If you don't want to attack with the navigator, like you want to keep her alive, you can just attack with the one cost alongside um, Misfortune seeing that happen, and that's a level up point, and then boom. It's really, really good in certain board states. 
Next, I have a couple epics in here just because I want to show you guys what to work towards. However, of course, I'm going to take them out in a moment after I explain them. So I usually like to run four, uh, six drops because the Cythria and the Genevieve, they're both really strong and they both, like, it depends on what you want to do. Some people run one of them at three, one of them at none, but I really like the two, two. Cythria makes your current board stronger during attack. Genevieve makes your current board stronger on summon, but she's also scout. So it's really a give and take. They're both very, very good. Uh, I like to run both, just depending on what I get. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to take them out though, because these are epics that we're working towards and not so much going to be auto includes because they are pretty hard to craft. If you have the epics though, definitely go for those. So with these extra card slots, we can just bump our current numbers. We can literally just go Relentless Pursuit to three. We can go Rangers Resolve to three. We can play other units if we want. We can play Grand Plaza if we have epics or this, or if you get these from chess, you can play Grand Plaza here. Um, let's see, what I'm personally going to do is maybe two more rallies that isn't Relentless Pursuit, because I like Barrier Rally. I think Repost is also good as a quick protection for Misfortune, and you can trade up into things, so let's see. We can probably do Repost at a two of. Nice little protection card for Misfortune, keep that up. We definitely don't want to run the third Rangers. I'm thinking third Make It Rain is probably good, and third Relentless Pursuit is probably good. So this is what it would look like for a beginner. Nice well-rounded numbers flexible, pretty much everything you want to do. The main theme of the deck is to play units, go wide, and then attack multiple times a turn with your win conditions on board. It is a board-centric deck that really benefits from good combat trick usage, aka Ranger's Resolve and Sharp Sight, and now the newly included Repost. So yep, that's it for this deck. Now here's the live commentary game for Scouts. Hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play this one. All right, so I haven't played Scouts in a while, so I'm kind of excited. We're gonna play against Lucian, or not Lucian, wow, I'm Lucian. Lulu and Tarek support deck probably combines the power of Ionia and Targon support cards very good I usually like to run Lulu Shen but Tarek is also pretty decent uh wow this is actually really cool wait on turn three I'm definitely going to play Blinding Assault and Misfortune so we're gonna pitch at least the Senna maybe I keep Ranger for four since we're attacking on evens I think that's probably correct I want to play something on turn 1, but then float turn 2. But I didn't get anything on turn 1. Um. Okay, actually it might just be Lucian then, huh? Lucian on attack 2 is too good to pass up. Uh, since I'm not attacking on odds, I don't technically need the Blinding Assault on the same turn. So yeah, okay, we'll do that. A little bit of versatility in our play here. Can't really do anything about this, I don't think. Now we can set up. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. That's actually better. This is what I was talking about with secondary win condition. Forget the misfortune stuff. Alright, we'll do this and level our Lucian then. <clears throat> if push comes to shove, we want to level Lucian because his effect allows us to rally. Which has insane synergy, so we'll do like this. Nice, thank you. Paid actor. Okay, now we'll do MF plus Blinding Assault on attack 4. MF. And if something weird happens, like a removal spell, we can do Sharp Sight instead. So we have the 2 mana to be flexible this turn. But Blinding Assault is the most uh, power. Kind of insane, actually. This is like game winning. He has to have Nopify or Deny for this. Okay, never mind. Well, uh, I think he's kind of really down bad. Into the future, I see. Okay. We'll grab this boy with our scout attack. Since we attacked with only scouts, we get to attack again. Alright, we'll grab this boy. We won't be able to get our rally in from Lucian seeing something die, but that's okay. I'll swing like that. That is 12 damage. Thank you, come again. See you next turn. If I draw another rally, then I can do that on his uh, his attack and my defense, which is really, really cool. No rally though, unfortunately. However, he has a lot to deal with. And I have sharp sight for that. I guess I'll just play Jagged Butcher. 
Jagged Butcher gives us Sharp Sight and Make It Rain mana for the rest of the turn. This is probably Make It Rain. And I also have Sharp Sight. Pale, that's fine. So we're gonna see something really cool here if he doesn't FF. And that would be uh, MF level. <laughs> so we're going to use this to block the elusive and die. Yes, we're going to int him because this is quick attack. I don't really care because we're going to get the rally from Lucian. That lets us scout attack. That lets us attack again with MF and we win the game just off of that play right there. It's, dated. it's just Lucian and Senna are so much pressure that he has to deal with. Craziness. And for the last deck that I want to cover, I want to cover Ash because Ash is given to you as a 7 win login reward and that's super awesome. I think you get two of her just right off the bat so that helps you build decks right away. And Ash is a really, really, really good card for new players. I think Ash decks are super undervalued even in like uh, high, high elo meta. So I want to talk about each of the cards, the game plan, because it's a little bit different. This one is probably the hardest of the three. It requires the most thinking and the most uh, reactive and the most matchup experience. So we have two Brittle Steel. This is a quick Frostbite enemies with three or less health. Frostbite means they have zero attack this turn. Now this is really crazy for one mana and it's at burst speed so the opponents can't even react to it. So that's super good because we want to Frostbite as much as possible in order to level up Ash. We also have two Elixir of Iron, it's just a quick plus two HP. Uh, there's a lot of quick damage rem like things going on in the meta, so having a quick burst of HP counters that, so that's super good. Omen Hawk, when I'm summoned, grant the top two allies in your deck 1-1, one, one. so this is a huge RNG effect. We want to play Omen Hawk on one most of the time, sometimes in the mid-game that's fine too, and we want to hit our champions with this. If we can hit Ash, that just like absolutely accelerates the game plan and makes the, the game so much easier. Also being able to hit like our other 1 HP units is really good, like our Glory Seeker can become a 6-2, Icefell Archer can be a 4-2, and he just like generates value essentially for the future turns. Super super good, super uh, just a well-rounded card. Three Sisters is awesome, we run this at a 2 of because it can give us any of these three. We get to pick one of them, we have to spend our 1 mana to get one, and also have enough mana to play this for the turn. Um, and the card is fleeting, which means it's going to go away if you don't use it. So, Three Sisters Splash Freeze is a 4 mana burst uh, Frostbite. Uh, three Sisters Fury of the North is a 5 mana uh, Fury of the North, so Grant and Ally 3 4, really good for combat and big protection. Or Entomb is a 6 mana Entomb, obliterate a unit to summon a frozen tomb in its place, which is this thing that they'll come back in two turns. But it's really good in combat. It's really good for stopping combos as well. If someone is making something super big is about to hit you, oh, into him. And then it just becomes this thing. So that's super good. We run that as just a flexible card in order to get different options depending on the game state. Icefell Archer is a quick frostbite. Very good for Ash Synergy. Trifarian Glory Seeker is a really big, really strong challenger unit. It can't block and it has one HP. So it dies to pretty much everything. You sneeze on it, it's gone. But five attack is really good at trading into a lot of things. Very good at sniping champions and stuff if the opponent doesn't have outs to it, or if you have your Elixir of Iron to protect her. Troll Chant, also really good protection. I'd say this is still the best combat trick in the game. Being able to give uh, an ally plus two health and then an enemy minus two attack. That doesn't have to be like... like it's just so crazy. So the way you use this is you can either... like If one thing is in combat, like one ally, one enemy, you can give yourself plus two and give them minus two, and that's a four HP differential. Or you can actually split and go like plus two on your ally over here, minus two on the enemy over there, and you win two combats. So the flexibility of this card makes it absolutely insane. Everosion Trapper is a 3-man 3-3 premium stats. When summoned, create an Enraged Yeti in top three cards, uh, and then you draw into him, he's a 1-mana 5-5. Five five. Really big unit, really good to play around. 5 attack is pretty important for our deck, for cards that I will mention later. Next we have Culling Strike. Culling Strike is probably still the best uh, removal in the game in terms of its mana cost. I think it's just kind of insane. Next to something like Thermo Beam, I guess, because that card is just insane. But Culling Strike, kill a unit with three or less power. So this hits a lot of champions in the meta. This will always hit a lot of units, a lot of champions, a lot of things with three or less power. However, for the things that 
have four or more attack, it's like, oh no, what do I do about those? Well, we just frostbite them, right? We can just use our Brittle Steel, we can just use our Ice Veil Archer, and we have a five mana combo of kill anything. Ice Veil Archer into Calling Strike, it literally says kill anything for a two card combo. So that's like absolutely insane at dealing with high pressure units, high pressure champions that are higher than four attack. So yeah, I mean, there we go. I mean, it's just good. Like Calling Strike is just insane. It's super cheap, super efficient removal. Highly recommend using it, especially in conjunction with Frostbite. Next, we have a couple champions. So this doesn't have to be LeBlanc. I'm just showing you the refined version, much like I did with Scouts, is um, two LeBlanc and one Sedge. I really like these numbers right now. LeBlanc has five attack. Super good for cards I'll mention in a little bit. Um, really insane pressure. If you can hit her with Omen Hawk, then she's a 6-3, and that's really good. You can protect her. She swings, level her up. You just get like more value, more pressure after that. She can be whatever you want. You don't even have to run this as a champion if you don't want to. You just need the three Ash as soon as possible. This could literally be no LeBlanc and no Sedge, but I'll talk about Sedge. It could be like triple Trindamir. It could be Darius in here. Uh, Vlad works. Braum works. He's not so good, but he works. Uh, Sion could work. Whatever champions you have, you could probably make work. So um, yeah, let me throw LeBlanc back in though, just to show the final version. Uh, Whispered Words is super good. Reputation. Activates if allies have struck 4 or 5 damage at least 4 times. So this is why the 5 attack units are valuable, like the LeBlanc and like the Trifarian Glory Seeker. Because if they hit 4 times, then this gets a mega discount. It gets cut in half and you get to draw 2. 2 mana draw 2 is beyond premium, so super good at refilling the hand and getting more resources. Next we have Aversion Hearthguard, also 5 attack, so it turns on reputation for us. When I'm summoned, grant all allies in your deck plus 1 plus 1. Which is super good. It makes your turn six, seven, eight units uh, game winning, and you get to put in a lot of pressure. Trifarian Assessor. When I'm summoned, draw one for each five plus power ally you have. This will include herself if she's ever hit by Omen Hawk, so she will draw for that too. So if you have three units on the board that have five power, she draws three. That's kind of insane. Really, really good if you have the board set up. Next, Reckoning. This is an epic, however, this is going to be in the final version of the deck. I will take this out, though, for new players. Definitely, if you have the epic wallet cards, craft this at 3. This is what I would consider a blowout card. If this resolves in the right situation, the opponent will automatically FF and you will win the game. The amount of times that this card wins you the game just on resolution is absolutely insane. So, like, if you have any 5 plus power ally, so like, let's say your Ash, your Hearthguard, your Glory Seeker, your LeBlanc, it needs to stay on the board, by the way, for resolution. If the opponent kills it while you're trying to use the spell, it won't work, so you need to have multiple to ensure it. But you will kill all units with 4 or less power. This does also include your own. However, if you're only running 5 plus power allies on the board and your opponent has a full board of small units that they're beating you down with and they all die, the opponent just lost. So, really insane blowout card. But I'll take it out real quick and show a replacement for it for the meantime. And then, of course, this is the Sejuani, like I mentioned earlier. Sejuani Frostbites on summon and gives them vulnerable, so allows you to attack them. Frostbite has synergy with Ash. Vulnerable lets you beat over stuff. You can also use Frostbite into Culling Strike, like I mentioned earlier, as a quick combo. She's 5 attack, so pretty good synergy there. But I'm going to take her out as well because you don't start with her. And it'll probably look something like this, right? So in the beginning, it'll probably look like... I think you start with one or two Darius. You might start with one or two Trendomir. So it's some kind of combination of that. I'll just throw that in. And then for the Reckoning, let's see if we can play with the numbers and figure out anything else. Honestly, to be honest, let me go to draw. The gen the best generic draw in the game for Freljord is Sentry. We could just run Sentry. Entreat is also an okay option, but Sentry is just nice. I think we run him until we get the um, Reckoning, because he just makes the deck a little bit more consistent. He'll die, and then he'll draw one. He trades into stuff. That's just pretty good. So it'll look probably something like this as a new player until you get Reckoning and until you get minus the Darius and Trinomir for the plus LeBlanc and Sejuani. So, yep. Now here's the showcase game for this deck. Hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play it. And I will see you for the outro. So I am running this Ash Sedge with um, the budget cuts. So no Sedge. And we're fighting, ooh, spiders. Oh, you know what's sad is I also don't have Reckoning because I try to keep this as beginner accurate as possible. This could be my Reckoning right now or one of my champions. Tragic. Uh, we'll do this. Just pitch all that. Keep our early game unit. Oh, we have our um, health gain though. This is actually pretty nice. So we float turn one since we don't have a turn one in hand. This will give us the Elixir of Iron Mana for the rest of the game until we want to use it. He didn't have an attack turn one, so that's very good. There's our Omen Hawk. Uh, it's probably Sentry, right? 
Could also do Omen Hawk and Float too. I think that's also fine. Because if we draw a champion or another unit to play, we'll play that on turn three. Yeah, it's not like we're attacking into this Elise regardless of what we do. Nice, that's pretty good. Now we have a Fearsome Blocker that is a draw. But I'm probably going to play Trapper, right? Block the Spider. Yeah, I think it's Trapper here. Get our nice 1 mana 5-5 five, five in the top cards. Stun is fine. That's a pretty weird time to use a stun, but I'll take it. Ravenous? Oh, Crawling Sensation. So he's going for Elise level. Hmm, you got a pretty good opener. My true beauty is beneath the skin. That's probably fine though. Nothing escapes my watch. We'll just do like this. I want the frostbite maybe the three two. So that way it can't trade into my fearsome blockers and then swing with everything. Probably use a troll chant here to beat one of these spiders. Eh, I could just pop up the elixir of iron. That's cheaper. I want to keep this guy alive too because he's also a fearsome blocker and it's going to force his spiderling to grab it next turn. Alright, he's got some pretty spicy tech in this uh, spider list. The Arachnoid Sentry plus this combo. Very interesting. He's probably lacking uh, direct damage then. Something will kill this at least though. You only have three challengers and I have three blockers. I get to kill Elise. If you attack with her. I get to swing combat my direction pretty much every which way as well. I have six mana to work with. I can play pretty much my whole hand. Almost. Lifesteal Fem... Okay, that's a weird card. That's a very weird card. But we're going to protect here and here. Uh, and then we're going to protect here and here. This swings combat heavily into my favor. Double troll chant means I go up three. <laughs> He has three cards in hand. So I'm not sure what he's going to do about this. Might. Wow. Just to make this kill? I mean, at least still dies and I get a draw, so that's fine for me. I'll take that. Oh, we got Ash. And she's hit by Omenhawk. Huge. That's really good for us. Play the Enraged Yeti. I'm going into turn six, right? Turn six floating one. Uh, let's Ice Veil Archer this. Then we'll play Ash. Ash will frostbite another thing. She's almost close to level. I'm pretty sure I just outmuscle him now. That's fine. We wanted to play Icefell Archer before our Ash, in in case he had a card like that. So now my Ash is gonna be safe because he used Crumble on my Yeti. Yeah, we outmuscle him. Our board is so strong. Yes, he has one more card than me in hand, but I have Sentry. And I have board control, so that's actually kind of hard for him to close out. I'm at 11 health. I really don't care about this thing. Another crumble, though? Oh no, it's Vile Feast. That's fine. I'm going to play Omen Hawk. This creates a chump blocker, so I can block 5-5 five five with my 1-1. One one. Nox Cry is also fine. He's running not Spider Burn at all. He's running some kind of mid-range spider deck. It's kind of cool, though. So, if I do 1-1 one, one here, that's fine, and then Noxcry will strike my draw card, it's also fine. Noxcry says, round end, strongest ally and weakest enemy strike each other, so that's just going to be a draw for me. Another Omen Hawk. And off the top, a Culling Strike. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just open attack. Omen Hawk is not that much value for me right now, as, as a play. Because he can probably play something bigger. So this is open attack. He takes six. Two cards in hand still. Okay. 
Ow, my omen hawk. So this at least is gonna kill my ash. Oh, unless. 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 I'm gonna frostbite this. So the option is either frostbite and use the ash spell or play a fresh one. Using the frostbite levels up ash right away, which gives me arrow on the top, which is super good. Now, do I take the five? I don't know. I guess it's fine to take the five. I go down to six. Does he kill me? I think it'd be pretty hard for him to kill me, but I don't want to risk it. I'm up on units. This thing can't block next turn, and his Nox Cry won't be able to hit me. What? What's your big spell? Oh, holy. Um, I can't really do anything about that. Okay. You're right. But, Nox Crya is going to kill off this Elise, so I don't even need to culling. His own card is going to kill off his unit for me. I can culling, and then I open attack and win. There's nothing he can do. There's no way. Uh, unless he Vile Feast. I guess there is something he can do. Top deck Vile Feast would allow him to generate that into that. There's no way he top decks Vile Feast. We're good. Yeah, let's go. Oh, he's sad. Rip. Let's go. That was fun. Even without Reckoning. Even without other champions. Alright, that's it for this one. I really hope you learned something. I uh, hope you can get into the game with any of these decks. They're all super fun to play. I hope I provided enough context to talk about like why the cards are in there. Uh, showed some of the final lists that will have the epics and stuff so that you can build towards that. Other than that, that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. Um, also, it lets me know that I did a good job in educating. So, with that, make sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tempo Mao if you want to see more live gameplay. I run through these decks quite often. I play Spiders, I play Scouts, I play Ash recently. So if you want more context, definitely check that out and see how it is live. And you can come and ask questions. I'm always happy to answer and teach new players. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.